Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. So again, welcome to our subject. And for today, we are about to discuss the recording and classifying business transactions, the process of journalizing, posting, and preparation of trial balance. So this is your instructor, Noel Burgonya. So just sit back, relax, take down notes. And if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes or even you can uh, comment your questions on this video lecture. Okay, so, yes, so I think we can start already with our discussion. So last time, we have actually discussed analyzing the business transactions. So just to give you a preview, you know, so when we talk about business transactions, these are events that have some effect to the resources of the business. Okay, nag-analyze po tayo, even though we use tabular approach, ang sabi ko po dun sa discussion natin is that particular analysis will just happen in our mind. Di ba? So we have analyzed a transaction whenever it will decrease or increase an account, whether an asset man yan, liabilities, or even the capital. Okay, so um, we will be using still those concepts since whatever we have analyzed, now we will carry it over on the next step of this accounting process, which we will be talking about today. Okay, so to start with our uh, particular topic, no? so we will be discussing first the rules of debit and credit. So again, in the previous video lecture, no, we have discussed increase and decrease. Okay, so that increase or decrease will now be transformed into an accounting terminology known as the debit and credit. So this is actually um, what we so-called T account, no? Uh, I discuss po natin mamaya. But um, this debit side or the left side, okay, is referring to our debit side, okay? Yung DR po na nakikita, no? This is the shortcut for uh, debit, no? And then uh, on the right side naman, we will have our credit or the CR. Okay, so this will be used later in analyzing or I mean recording no, the analyzed transactions into our um, formal accounting record. So pag sinabi po natin debit or credit, it actually does not have any specific definition. Okay, uh, because when we talk about debit and credit, it just simply denotes an increase or decrease in an account. So pwede pong yung debit, it will represent an increase or even a decrease in a certain account, which will later we will be uh, discussing that as well. Okay, ganun din yung credit. No? It will denote either increase or decrease. So hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na ay debit, increase lang yan. No. Or even credit, okay, it decrease lang. Okay, so hindi rin po ganun yung definition natin. So it denotes either an increase or decrease depending in an account. Okay. Sir, bakit po depende in an account? Because we have what we so-called normal balance. Okay? So pag sinabi po natin normal balance, okay, this particular um, term no, is used in understanding the rules of debits and credits easily. Okay? So tignan natin. So pag sinabi po natin the normal balance of an account is debit, Okay, so pag uh, again sinabi po ay itong debit yung normal balance ng isang account natin. By the way class, uh, the word account is referring to the elements of the financial statements. Ha? So it includes either uh, the assets, liabilities, capital accounts, or even our income at saka expenses. Okay, so later we will be introducing as well a formal terminology you now which uh, this particular account or the titles will come from. Okay, so maya maya ng konte. So going back, if the normal balance no, ng ating account ay debit, then ibig sabihin po nun, we will record any increase based on our analysis in that account on the debit side. Okay, so kung saan po nag increase ang isang account, then that is referring to the normal balance. So kung ang normal balance niya ay debit, ibig sabihin what we have analyzed as increased will be uh, put in the debit side. And then, syempre kabaliktaran, kung decrease naman po, then it will be referring to the credit side. Again, please take note ha, ang sabi dito, kung normal balance ng account ay debit, then it will increase on the debit side. 
Pero, of course, kabalik taran, it will decrease on the credit side. Okay? So, mamaya we will know ano ba yung mga accounts na uh, merong normal balance na debit at pag sila ay nag-increase, we will be putting those in the debit side. Okay? In addition, no, aside from the normal balance na debit, there are also accounts wherein their normal balances are on the credit naman. Okay? So, meron din mga normal balance credit. So, again, pag sinabi natin normal balance, it represents where does the account increases. Okay? So, kung credit po ang normal balance niya, then most likely, that particular account will increase on the credit side. Okay? So, dito naman siya sa credit mag-increase. And then, of course, if just in case that account decreases, then it will go to the other side, which is the debit. Okay? So again, i-transform natin yung ating increase or decrease last time in the analysis process going to the debit and credit. Okay? So pag normal balance ay debit, mag increase sa debit. Pag normal balance ay credit, it will increase in the credit side. Okay? So I hope that that is clear ha. Kasi mamaya, once we formally uh, start the journalizing phase, which is the formal recording of the analyzed transactions in our book of original entry, then we will be applying uh, the rules of debit and credit. Okay? Sige. So ngayon, isa-isahin po natin yung mga elements natin or accounts po natin no, in their normal balances. So let's start with the assets. Okay? So di ba meron tayong iba't ibang assets discussed in module 1 such as cash, accounts receivables, di ba, equipment, machineries, or supplies. So um, using the analysis of debit and credit, kailan po ba uh, magkakaroon ng increase sa asset? Diba? Uh, usually, dun sa ating na-analyze, mag increase po yung asset natin kapag, let's say, for example, we buy an asset, diba? bumili tayo, or even um, baka po merong investment ng cash by the owner, diba? ano pa? Pwedeng tayo po ay nag-provide ng service. Diba? Nag-provide tayo ng service, whether for cash, or on account. Okay? So, yun yung mga possible na na-discuss natin previously, no? Uh, where uh, the assets natin have increased. By the way, it's not only limited to that, no? Marami pa tayong na-discuss last time. So, ngayon, no? Uh, when we say increase in asset, so pag tumaas po yung value ng asset natin, okay? So, our asset will increase by a debit. Okay, so kung dati inanalyze mo, increased ang sinasabi natin ngayon pag tumaas yung asset natin or nadagdagan yung asset natin, then we will now denote it by a uh, debit. Okay, so debit po yun. Now, just in case your asset decreases, so ano yung mga possibility na nag-decrease yung asset natin? Maybe nagbayad tayo ng utang, diba? nag-withdraw yung owner, Okay, and the likes. No? So, pag nag-decrease naman yung asset natin, then okay, it will now be denoted by a credit. Okay? Credit. So, ngayon, kung mapapansin ninyo, the asset increase uh, on the debit side and then your, uh, your, your decrease will be denoted by a credit, alin po yung normal balance? Okay? Remember kanina in our introductory part, your... Um, normal balance will be the side where that account increases. So kung ang asset po ay nag-increase sa debit, then we will refer the normal balance of our asset as debit. Okay? So are we clear in that class? Do you have any questions? Again, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay? So I hope that that is clear, no? So that's uh, our first uh, account or element, no, which will be later containing various account titles then, diba? such as cash, receivables, and the likes. Okay? Let's proceed with the other element naman, which is our contra asset. Okay. So by the way, class, no, um, this contra asset for modules 1, 2, and 3, we have not yet introduced this no, because um, actually we will be using that pagdating po ng um, module number 4. no, But Pag sinabi natin contra asset, no, kinokontra niya or it will be a deduction sa asset natin because of some certain premises no, uh, which we will be discussing in module number 4 such as, um, bigyan ko na kayo ng example, no, yung allowance. 
hindi ito yung allowance na pera mo ha this is allowance for bad that's for example no um, i will explain it further in module number four okay tapos meron din tayo may encounter na accumulated depreciation okay so those are example of contra asset accounts no so since kino contra niya yung asset then the other way will be uh, how we're going to record them so pag may sinabi tayo later on na increase in the contra account then it will now be denoted on the credit naman eh so di ba asset yan um, yes it is part of an asset but it is a contra asset so dapat magkaiba sila or um, kumbaga opposite side yung paglalagyan natin nung increase no kasi yung asset po natin will increase on the debit side thus its contra account will be uh, going to our credit side naman okay then of course if uh, your uh, contra account will decrease in some certain uh, certain circumstances then it will now be denoted by a debit okay so since our contra account increased on the credit side then the normal balance of that contra account will be on the credit side okay so i hope na nasusundan ako ha? so don't worry about the contra accounts we will not be using them in module number three or this discussion okay uh, we will be reserving that for our discussion in module number four okay so next element would be liabilities so ayan yung liabilities naman po natin no um Kailan tumataas yan? Pag nangutang tayo, di ba? Either we have accounts payable, o kaya naman utilities payable, nangutang tayo, hindi pa natin nababayaran. Then, whenever that liability increases, then in the rules of debit and credit, it will be increased by a credit. Okay? So, it will increase naman on the credit side. Then, of course, kung credit side yung increase nun, pag nabawasan yung liabilities natin, baka nagbayad po tayo no, ng ating utang, then it will now be denoted by a debit naman. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. No? So, what will happen is since uh, your liabilities will increase on the credit side, then the normal balance of it will be what? Correct. Credit. Okay, so I hope nakikita niyo na yung pattern, no? So parang accounting equation lang 'yan na asset is equal to liabilities plus capital. So since nasa left side yung asset, then most likely it will be increased by a debit. Okay? And then yung liabilities naman, other side siya, then it will be increased by a credit. So mamaya titingnan natin yung sa capital on the next slide. Okay? So, any questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay, so let me continue with the other accounts. Ngayon naman po yung capital natin. So, for the capital, no, since as you all know, kapartner niya yung liabilities doon sa other side ng accounting equation, whenever your capital increases, okay, it will be denoted by a credit naman. Okay, so hindi na natin basta-basta... Um, re-record din yung capital natin no ng increase or decrease kasi po dito in our recording process we will be recording only in the capital una yung ating investment di ba pag may investment yung owner whether kahit anong investment man po yan then it will now be increased by the credit side Okay. Ano pa ba yung others na diniscuss natin sa module 2 which increases the capital? Actually, revenue. Di ba? So, last time, we have put revenue or income. So, pag meron tayong income or revenue, nilalagay natin siya sa capital. Unfortunately, here in module number 3, no, we will be separating already the revenue or income account. So, bali, ang papasok na lang na increase sa capital natin would be una yung net investment. And then later on, pag nasa module 5 na po tayo, your capital will also be increased by a net income. Okay? Net income na lang po yung mag increase sa capital. Okay? But anyways, here in module number um, 3 discussion po natin, no? um, wala pa naman tayong net income computed here. So we will just focus first on investment. So pag yung atin pong owner ay nag-invest, then it will increase your capital. Thus, it will be denoted by a credit. Okay? So, wala pong revenue or income na tayong ilalagay dyan since isi-separate na po natin siya. 
Okay? On the other hand, your capital will decrease naman. Di ba? So, um, remember that uh, your capital once decrease will have the opposite side naman which is the debit. Okay? Sir, anong reason bakit nagde-decrease yung capital? Last time, if you have remembered, meron tayong withdrawal. Okay? At saka meron din tayong um, expenses. Dito natin nilalagay yan sa decrease in capital. But unfortunately, no, um, we will now be separating it. Meron na tayong ibang account mamaya kasunod na nitong capital for withdrawal. So for the meantime, no, for the meantime in module number 3, hindi nyo po ilalagay yung withdrawal muna sa capital. Okay? Uh, actually that will be in module number 5 which will be I'm I'm going to explain further bakit yung withdrawal natin sa module 2 nung nag-analyze eh dinidak sa capital. That will actually be um, discussed further pag nasa module 5 na tayo. So I hope that you can still remember that ha. Huwag niyo pong kakalimutan yung mga previous discussions natin until the end of this particular subject kasi um ano yan, kumbaga chain reaction yan. It will affect one um, module as well in the future. Okay? Ganun din po yung ating expense. No? So um, just like uh, revenue or income kanina, your expense will be uh, separately recorded mamaya in our expense account. Okay, So hindi nyo muna siya ilalagay sa capital for the meantime. Okay, sir, what will be the cause of a decrease in capital? So in module 5, you will have the withdrawal and then you will have also yung net loss. Pero ito ulit, nasa module 5 pa na part ito. No? Um, decrease. Uh, usually the decrease will happen in module number 5 whenever we have the last or second to the last step in the accounting process. Now you have the closing entries. Okay? So, pero for the meantime, no, ang may experience no pa lang, most likely in our journalizing part would be investment and they will be denoted by an increase in the credit side. But don't worry, no? again, uh, what I'm going to discuss here lang muna is the rules of debit and credit. So, again, if there is an increase in the capital, then it would be denoted by a credit. Then, if it decreases in the future, pag na-discuss na natin yung mga um, tamang foundation, why there is a decrease in capital, then it will be on the side of debit naman po. Okay? So, since your capital increased on the credit side, then your normal balance would be on the credit side. Alright? So, I hope na malinaw po yun ha. Then, kanina, nabanggit ko na hindi muna natin ilalagay yung withdrawal sa capital because we will have the other account which is yung drawing or in other materials, no withdrawal po yung nakalagay. So, as I have discussed this drawing or withdrawal before in module number 2, it means that is, this is a, an amount no, na kinukuha ng owner mula sa business. So, pwedeng cash yan, di ba, na winidraw ng owner o kaya naman other assets na kailangan ni owner so kaya niya winiwithdraw. So since this drawing account no uh, is um, opposite of capital okay yung capital kasi pag nag-invest ka yun yun eh pero pag drawing kinukuha mo yun then magkaiba sila ng normal balance so when we have a drawing or withdrawal okay pag may withdrawal po tayo the owner withdraw cash the owner withdraw non-cash assets then right now it will be denoted by a debit Okay, so pag nag-debit po tayo ng withdrawal or drawing, then it means there is an increase in our um, drawing denoted by a debit on it. And then pag nabawasan naman po or um, i-closing na natin pagdating ng module 5, yung uh, ating withdrawal or drawing account, then it will be decreased on the other side naman which is credit. Ngayong module 3 wala pa tayong credit sa ano eh withdrawal no. So hindi pa natin to ma-experience. It will be most likely in module number 5. Okay? So since your drawing increased in the debit side, then the normal balance of a drawing account will be what? debit. Okay? So I hope that that is clear no. And then uh na mention ko kanina no that their income and expense will not go to the capital directly so i-discuss natin ngayon separately yung ating 
income and expense accounts. So for the income account, no, um, parang capital din yan, no, yung kanyang normal balance. Okay, since they have the same sides, pag nag-increase yung income data, then it will go to the increase in capital, di ba? So since capital has a credit normal balance, then our income as well will be increased by a credit. Sir, saan nga ulit nang gagaling yung increase in income? Okay, may increase in income if we provided services, di ba? Uh, under the definition of accrual basis. So, nag-provide tayo ng services when uh, when we have either cash o kaya on account, then that will become an income. And since may income tayo, it will be recorded under the credit side. Okay? Or even pagdating natin in the future in merchandising, as mentioned as well in the definition of accrual basis of accounting, once you have delivered goods. Okay? Pag nag-deliver ka ng goods, then ayan po no uh, that will be part of your income okay and it will be represented by a credit side no on the other hand once your income decreases okay nandoon naman siya sa opposite side which will be debit okay so kailan nababawasan yung income natin we haven't discussed that yet since again no just like the others that i have mentioned a while ago they will be discussed further in module number 5 on the part of closing entry no pero just in case no um for module 3 wala pa tayong decrease in income but right now in understanding the rules of debit and credit pag nagdecrease po yung income natin because of future journal entries po natin then they will now be represented by a debit Okay, so since uh, your income increased on the credit side, then its normal balance will be on the credit side. Okay, and then finally, your expense. So expense decreases the capital, di ba? Ganyan yung concept natin. But separating it, of course, opposite yung kanyang um, normal balance compared with the capital. Okay, yung income kanina, di ba, um, naging hawig niya yung normal balance ng capital since once there is an income, it increases the capital. Ngayon, once there is an expense, typically, since it decreases the capital, opposite side yung ating analysis, no? So, your expense, once uh, there is an expense. Sir, kailan nga ulit may expense? There is an expense if you have used already the expense item or we have an expired portion, di ba? That's based on the definition natin in the accrual basis. We record expenses once it is incurred. Okay? So once it is incurred, it means it is used or baka nag-expired na siya. Okay? Regardless when the cash is what? Paid. Okay? So dito po, no, once there is an expense, may nagamit tayong item, okay? either pwedeng salary ng employee, o kaya naman um, utilities na gamit natin, o kaya naman we have also gasoline and oil and others that we have uh, also mentioned in our analysis before, then it will be represented now by a debit. Okay, so we have a debit side no, for the increase of expense. And of course, pag merong decrease sa expense, which will be explained again further in module number 5, then it will be represented by a credit. Okay, so since your expense okay, uh, was increased on the debit side, then the normal balance of it will be the debit side. Okay, so are we clear on that class? All right. So to summarize, no. So ano ano po ba yung mga accounts na may normal balance na debit at sa credit. So doon sa debit natin, okay, we have a normal balance una yung asset natin, of course. Okay, yung assets natin it will be increased on the debit side, and then uh, we have also yung expense. Okay expense. So itong kaka-discuss natin once uh, we have incurred an expense then they will be falling under the debit side. Okay? While on the credit side naman, oh by the way, sorry, meron pa pala tayo doon sa debit, no? We have also the drawing. Diba? The drawing account kanina, once it increases, no? It's on the opposite side or the debit. Now, sa credit naman po, okay, the normal balance accounts in our credit side would be all right, very good. So we start with the liability. Okay, then we have also our, correct, your capital. And then we have also your income. 
Okay? So, yan po. Tigtatlo tayo, no? Nang normal balance. By the way, meron pa on the credit side yung inad natin kanina yung contra account. Okay? Contra asset account. Its normal balance was credit kanina. Okay? So, ayan po yung summary ng ating rules of debits and credits. And again, ha, when we talk about debit and credit, it could represent an increase or decrease in the account. And when we talk about normal balance, ano nga ulit yun? Very good. So, it is where our account increases. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. No? So, mamaya, we will be using these rules of debit and credit no? once we record formally our uh, analyzed transactions. Okay? Sige. So, kung wala kayong questions, then let's have a short exercise. No? And we are given some account titles and let's try to analyze no? or let's try to um, check whether debit ba or credit siya nag-increase or decrease and what will be the normal balance. Okay? So, let's start with cash. So, our cash is considered as an asset. So, kung asset yan, okay, pag nag-increase siya, saan pupunta? It will go to the debit side. Then, kung nag-decrease naman, opposite ng debit, credit. Okay? So, the normal balance is where the asset increases. So, our asset was increased by a debit. Thus, its normal balance is debit. Okay? The next, accounts receivable. So, also, accounts receivable is an asset, di ba? So, kung asset yan, it will be increased by a debit. It will be decreased by a credit. And since it increases in the debit side, then its normal balance would be debit. Okay? Then we have our accounts payable. So your accounts payable is a liability. So this is a liability. So kaila sa an side siya nagi increase. Our liability will be increased on the credit side naman, and it will be decreased kung nagbayad tayo ng liability on the debit side, and our normal balance no is where it increases. So that is your credit side. Okay? Then, capital. Okay? So, it's a capital account. So, your capital will be increased on the credit side. Then, it will be decreased by a debit side. And we will have a normal balance where it increases. So, that will be credit. Okay? Next, we have your Bergogna drawing or withdrawal. Diba? So, which is uh, opposite of the capital. So, once it increases, no, yung drawing account, then it will be represented by a debit. Then, once it decreases, it will be represented by a credit. And it's normal balance where it increases debit. Okay? Mukha na tayo pala ka, diba? Debit, credit. Joke lang. <laughs> but anyway, so I hope that you can uh, can uh, get yung dinidiscuss natin. No? So next, we have unearned revenue. So remember class, unearned revenue is a liability account. Ha? Liability account natin yan. So uh, since liability yan, it will be increased by a credit. Then it will be decreased pag, uh, pag ito po ay um, nabawasan na no? on the debit side. And its normal balance is where it increases, so that's credit side, okay? Then we have service revenue, so that's an income account, okay? So aware naman tayo ng income will be increased by a credit, and then it will be decreased by a debit. And its normal balance, of course, where it increases would be credit, okay? Next, we have uh, salaries expense. So, salaries expense is, of course, an expense. So, since expense yan, it will be increased on the debit side. Then, once we have a decrease, okay, so it will be part of the credit. And uh, the normal balance where it increases, then that will be your debit side. Next, we have allowance for doubtful account. Ito na mentioned ko to kanina, no? but this is uh, an example of a contra account or contra asset which we will be using in our module number um, module number 5. Okay? So, uh, sorry, module number 4 then gagamitin natin yan. So, ayun, uh, since this is a contra asset, so it contradicts the normal balance of our asset. Okay? So, an increase in this allowance will be denoted by a credit. 
then it will be decreased by a debit and its normal balance is where it increases so we have our credit side okay then next we have notes payable which is a liability so liability po yan so it will be increased by the credit side and then it will be decreased by a debit and then we have the normal balance where it increases your credit okay so are we clear on this class all right so i hope na nasundan po natin no so to wrap up the rules of debit and credit so again as we mentioned a while ago no so we have uh, the debit on the left side and the credit on the right side and actually parang ganito yan no it is uh, just like our accounting equation no that the debit should always be equal with the credit okay uh, last time we have the asset is equal to liabilities plus capital and actually expanded accounting equation so we have uh, plus income minus expenses okay so um, equal dapat yung both sides same with our debit and credit so your debit should always be equal to the credit okay so bakit po palaging ganyan yung concept natin kailangan equal yung one side with another side because that is what we have mentioned before na tinatawag po natin na double entry bookkeeping system okay so in the double entry bookkeeping system we are recording the transactions in the twofold effect of our uh, particular transaction diba? so if the other side increases then there is another which uh, increase as well or decreases no so um, in this case dahil nasa rules of debit and credit na tayo the debit should always be equal with our credit Okay, so I hope that that is clear. Any questions or clarifications, please let me know lang po on our respective chat boxes. All right, so if you need a break, you can pause for a while uh, with this video lecture. But of course, ako, no? hindi ko naman po post to, then I will continue with my discussion. Okay, so uh, tandaan niyan ha, gagamitin natin mamaya yan in our um discussion of the steps in accounting process okay so yes so we're done with the rules and debits and credit so let's proceed now with our accounting cycle okay so let me introduce to you formally the accounting cycle or our accounting process okay so um, when we talk about the accounting cycle this refers to the series of sequential steps and procedures that we accomplish no uh, to achieve the accounting process okay so we have actually various steps in our accounting process and we have uh, eventually started na nung nasa module 2 po tayo no so we have started with analyzing or identifying the business transactions okay and then for today we will be discussing step number 2 which is uh, more on recording the transactions in the journal or ito po yung journalizing later and then we will be posting that into our ledger so that's step number three and then we will have the preparation of the trial balance okay and then after that no um by the way uh for this module we will be discussing step number two three and four no um including the additional video lectures that i am going to uh, provide you for um examples of this processes because for this uh, video lecture now this is more on conceptual okay i will just be uh, giving you some definitions and then the steps theoretically and then i will create another video lecture for uh, specific examples okay so after natin ng step 4 no so we will have to prepare worksheet pero um it will be an optional step no including adjusting entries okay so yung adjusting entries na yan we will be discussing it in module number 4 okay so uh pang finals part na natin yan and then preparation of financial statements so na mention naman natin in module 1 kung ano itong mga financial statements na to so we will be preparing them formally and then journalize and posting the adjusting entry discussed in module 4 then closing entry so ito po pang module 5 na to no uh, itong part ng step numbers 5 for the worksheet up to um, 
this is step number 10. No? So they will be all part of your module number 5's discussion. Okay, so preparation of post-closing at saka reversing entries. Then after that, no, you will start again with step number 1. Okay, so by the way, class, ha, do not be confused. In some other materials, no, um, hindi hindi po siya ten steps, no. It may be a compressed steps, o kaya naman much longer steps. But typically, no, these are the important steps in our accounting process, which uh, will be contained as well in uh, even if um, yung iba ay hindi po tayo parehas ng um, number of steps. Kasi minsan nakokompress, eh, kinokompress nila, tinatanggal nila yung optional steps, o kaya naman there are also other steps which are being expounded into uh, various steps. Okay? So, wag kayong mag-alala kung hindi parehas na 10 steps because they have still the same no, um, goal no, to accomplish our accounting cycle or the process that we need to take into account not to provide the financial information needed by the users okay so ayan so yan po yung ating accounting cycle and again we have already started it with module 2 no for the analyzing business transactions so i hope that by at this moment no you have already um internalized and you have already uh, grasped no the the concept of analyzing the business transaction before because okay um on the next slide we will now be starting step number 2 3 and four, no? the theoretical concepts. Okay? So yes, again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay. So let's start now with step number two. So after natin mag-analyze ng business transaction, so out of our source document, diba, which um, supports the uh, business transaction, okay, we are now ready to journalize. So when we talk about journalizing, okay, so this is the formal process of recording our business transaction, which was analyzed uh, last time based on the source document, no, in the book of original entry or known as our journal. So pag sinabi mong book of original entry class, ha, this is where we start the, the writing process. Kaya nga nabanggit ko, di ba, in module 2, nangyari lang yun sa mind. Kasi hindi naman talaga tayo formally naggagawa ng table. No? Since uh, that's only, kumbaga, a representation lang of how we analyze. But since we are formally recording our transactions in this journalizing process, then it will be initially recorded in our book of original entry or known as the journal. No? Sir, journal, yan ba yung ano namin? Um, diary? No, no. So when we talk about journal, that is referring to a formal record, which is later we will be showing an example of a journal. Okay, so I know that you have bought already an example journal na binigay ko po sa inyo. So halos, ganun din yung uh, journal na tinutok kayo dito. Okay, so on which the double entry system was used. So ayun nga, no? in the process of journalizing, we will be recording our transactions now formally using the double entry system which is actually based on the concepts of debits and credit na diniscuss po natin kanina in the introduction. Okay, now, once you have recorded something in the journal, ang tawag po sa kanya is, um, uh, okay, sorry. So, before tayo mag-proceed no? So, please take note that in our double entry system, okay, so we have to observe the following uh, rules or, or some rules, no, uh, in recording our transactions. So, one, no? two or more accounts are affected by each transaction. So just like what we did in module number two, pag nag-analyze tayo, diba, there is uh, at least a minimum of two accounts being affected. Either mag increase yung dalawang account or mag decrease or it affects the both sides of our accounting equation. So same is true with this discussion natin that it will affect two or more accounts kasi again, we have to apply the concepts of debit and credit no? uh, that our um, debit and credit should always be equal and of course, um, to be equal with each other, it needs two or more accounts. Okay? So, after that, no? Remember na based din dun sa kaninang sinabi ko, the sums of the debits should always be equal with the credit. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng hindi balance yon, just like the accounting equation. 
And then, ayan. <laughs> Lastly, paulit-ulit ako na, our accounting equation should always be equal. So, ayan na, dala-dala natin yung accounting equation. Okay, even the expanded accounting equation natin. Okay, and our rules of debits and credits should always be equal. Okay, sa tandaan niyan ha. So, pag nag-record tayo, you need to make sure that uh, every amount that you are writing, okay, should be equal no and it is correct so remember class how we need to apply here yung faithful representation na dinescas natin dati where our financial information should be free from error okay so that we could be able to uh, have it faithfully represented as well as it should be um, complete okay so nabanggit ko kanina no that we are recording in the journalizing process in a journal. So let's uh, discuss a journal uh, proper no. So the journal or book of original entry natin okay is a chronological record. So pag sinabi nating chronological record sunod-sunod no. Okay? So san paano siya sunod-sunod? It is based on the dates no, syempre once you record ayaw natin yung sabog no. So dapat once you record it should be in accordance with a chronology which is based on the dates of our business transaction. Okay? So pag nag-record tayo, of course the first transaction of the period it should be recorded first before there would be additional transactions. So just like what we did in the analysis phase po natin. Okay? So once you write something in the journal natin or the book of original entry, it is now known as your journal entry. Okay? So yan po yung formal terminology nung ating isusulat sa journal, no? journal entry. And this journal entry will show us the effects of the business transactions in terms na po of debits and credits. So wala na kayo makikita ang increase, decrease, but rather we will now be transforming it using the rules of debits and credits kanina okay in the journal no so that uh, it would be recorded formally using the double entry bookkeeping system okay so we have actually two types of journals okay one of it will be used in this FABM1 okay so first would be yung general journal so this will be the simplest type of journal which we will be explaining later okay and this is commonly used okay especially kung wala ka nitong special journals. Okay? Uh, buti pa yung journal special na no? char lang. Okay? So, when we talk about special journal, no, which we will be using uh, pagdating na po natin ng merchandising, okay, is used to record frequently occurring transactions. So, yung general journal ba, hindi pang frequently occurring transactions? Pang frequently occurring transactions din naman, yung general journal. Yun nga lang, wala siyang specialization unlike with the special journals because um, we can have, let's say, for example, in the special journals, meron tayong sales journal. So, lahat ng uh, ating benta or even service revenues, they could be found there. No? Pagsasama-samahin lahat. Unlike with the general journal na uh, the record will be based in chronology lang ng transactions and there will be no um, kumbaga, specialization. Okay? Another example of special journal, purchases journal. No? If you bought something on account, dun mo sinusulat. Even pag nagbayad ka or cash receipts or sorry, naka-receive ka ng cash or cash disbursements, no? meron din silang kanya-kanyang journal. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, we will be discussing that in the future for our um, accounting for merchandising business since uh, doon natin siya gagamitin. No? For the meantime, in this discussion of service business, we will just be first using general journal. Pero take note ha, even if it is a service business that we are going to discuss right now, okay, you can also use special journals. Pero again, uh, um, I am deferring the discussion of special journals pagdating na lang po natin ng merchandising so that you can be familiarized with general journal first. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. No? So again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. So mamaya, I will show you yung itsura ng isang general journal. Okay? So bago tayo magbigay ng um, specific picture kung paano po itong general journal, let me introduce you for second no, don, after knowing the journal, yung chart of accounts naman. Okay? So uh, when we talk about the word chart of accounts, no? This is actually a formal listing 
of all of the accounts. Okay, and their account titles at sa corresponding account number. Okay, so as you can see here, no, this is an example chart of accounts of our BTS consulting firm. So an example company. Okay, so companies uses the chart of accounts so that once they record in the journal, no, they will have consistent titles at the same time account number. Okay. A chart of account of one company may be different from another ha, depending upon their uh, particular company setup. Okay? So, iba-iba po sila. Now, in this example, no, as you can see, it is arranged based on financial statements order. So, it is uh, asset firsts and then liabilities, capital, income, and expenses. So, dito po ninyo babasihan yung titles ng mga accounts. No? Kasi last time, uh, I have just given you in the analysis, ito yung mga titles. No? Pero, um, even if uh, such the case, in the real world, no, a chart of accounts is first created no, before you start the recording process. Para maging consistent nga tayo sa titles na gagamitin. Okay? So, as you can see here, no, we have the titles to be used. Okay? Um, it is based on liquidity, which we will be discussing also in the future. Okay, tapos ito accumulated, nabanggit ko kanina, contra account yan, di ba? So, ayan, um, account titles, and you have also the account numbers. So, the account number will be used later no, in our discussion of the posting process. Okay, so abang na maya maya. Now, our accounts should be numbered in flexible manner which will permit us to index or cross-referencing. So later, no, once we are already giving example for um, the journalizing and posting process, then we will be using these numbers and titles. So, talagang tatlong number lang po yung account number. Actually, hindi. No? So in other companies, it could be eight digits. No? Sa former company ko, it's around 10 digits. Okay? Or even alphanumeric, pwedeng may letter A sila. Okay? A for all of the assets, then L for the liabilities, uh, C for capital or equity, pwede rin ganun, no? Or even, ayun nga, no? um, pwedeng two or more numbers yung ating account number. So, nakadepende po yan on the setup of the company since uh, it's entity-based naman po under arrangement. Ngayon, kung mapapansin mo lang dito sa naging example ko, no? Kung lahat ng asset yan, nagsisimula siya sa 1. Diba? 1. And then sa liabilities 2, capital 3, capital 4, and capital, uh, sorry, income 4, and then expenses 5. So ayan, no? for, for easy referencing no? ng company. So ayan, nakadepende ulit siya. For as long as you know the reason bakit meron tayo nito, it is the listing of the account titles and their corresponding account numbers for the consistency no, of usage in the company. Sir, pag may chart of accounts na po ba, hindi na pwedeng i-edit yan, you can still edit it no, kung meron ka pong uh, hindi na ilagay dito. No? Actually, um, Ayun nga, babalikan ko yung binanggit ko kanina. No? So once you started a business and you are forming your accounting department, so one of the processes or one of the steps na kailangan mong i-take into consideration bago ka mag-formal recording is to create this chart of accounts no? for consistency of the titles. Ngayon, pag nakita mong, ay, yung transaction na to, yung kanyang account titles, hindi swak dito, then you can modify it naman as time goes by. No? So you modify it, it's either you are using accounting system or nagma-manual ka. By the way, in this uh, ating discussion, no? so we will be just using manual system muna. Okay? But in the future, pag kayo po ay nag-take na ng accounting course, then you will also study their accounting information systems. Okay? Computerized versions. Okay? Sige. So, ayan na. Um, you will see in the future some chart of accounts or even I will be giving you the titles and the account numbers no, so that we will have a consistent view on what will be the titles and account numbers to be used in recording the transactions. Okay? So, yan yung babalik-balikan ninyo para makita niyo yung formal account titles natin and numbers. Okay? So, ito ay example lang ha. Hindi ito palaging ginagamit natin. Okay, so now after showing you where the titles or the account number came from or our chart of accounts, no, which are written in our journal and the later na um, formal record natin, now let me show you na 
uh, formally an example journal. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if you have already um, bought your journal notebook, no? Pero um, see here in the screen, no? Uh, an example format, no? This is a two-column journal. Okay, two-column lang siya. Okay, by the way, uh, yung mga nakasulat dyan, wala talaga yan pag binili nyo po yung um, journal, no? So, lines lang po yun nandyan. Okay? So, um, eventually, we are going to write something para madenote natin kung ano po yung mga columns na yan. Okay? So, um, this is an example of a general journal po natin class. Okay? So, um, I will be asking you to write general journal in um, the middle of the first layer natin dito sa taas. And then, there are some journals na meron na po siyang lagayan ng page number. Okay? So, um, kung meron na pong page number yung journal niyo, ang lalagay niyo na lang is the number itself. Okay? Or kung wala man, then just write page and the number. Okay? Sir, para saan po ba yung page number? Later, we will be using that for cross-referencing with the next step in the accounting process. Okay? So, I have written here the um, specific titles of the columns. Okay? So, let me explain it one by one. So, first is yung date. Oh, buti pa yung journal, may date no ikaw, wala. Charot! <laughs> okay, joke lang. So, when we talk about the column of dates, so, of course, it is used to record the year, the months, no? Okay, and please take note, at saka yung specific date. So, the year and month are not rewritten for every entry unless the year of the month changes or a new page is needed. Okay, so pag kayo po ay magpo-formally record na dito sa ating general journal, no? every time that you're going to write the year and month, no? it will only happen in the first uh, record. Okay, or kapag nagpalit daw yung buwan or baka nagpalit ka ng page. So just like this, no? in the date, so makikita ninyo pinagkasya yung month at saka yung year. Okay, nasa taas yung year class ha, huwag kakalimutan. So nata nasa taas yung year ng recording natin and then the month. Okay? Sir, pag hindi po kasi yung month, pwede ba namin i-abbreviate? Yes, you can abbreviate this. Okay? And then uh, para yan dito sa malaking side, no. Um, I know that some of your notebooks may have numbers, may mga numbers na po dito na nakasulat. Okay, so okay lang yan, pero diyan po natin ilalagay sa larger part na yan yung ating year and month. Okay? So, gaya ng sabi sa instructions, no, you will not need to write um, every time na magre-record ka dito yung year and month. Kasi once you have written it here, no, kagaya nito nakikita nyo sa screen na April 2021, unless maglagay ka ng other month ulit or nagpalit ka ng page, no, it means na lahat ng nakarecord dito, lahat yan referring to the month of April 2021. Okay? So, clear po ba tayo doon? Alright. Tapos, no, um, dito sa uh, maliit na box inside the date, this will now be referring to the specific date. Okay? So, dyan po sinusulat kung ang transaction po ay April 1, then the 1 will be written here. Kung ang transaction is April 2, then 2. Okay, April 3. So, kaya nga kanina, di ba, in our uh, initial discussion, we have mentioned that this uh, journal is used to record chronological, chronologically the business transaction. So, again, it's based on dates. Kaya importante yung date class, ha? So, I hope that that is clear. Okay. So, that's for the date column. Ulitin lang natin, ha? The year and month will be uh, not rewritten. Okay, for every entry or for every journal entry na i-record natin dito, okay, unless nagkaroon ng change in months or baka nagpalit tayo ng page. Sir, paano yung date natin? Halimbawa, um, meron tayong tatlong transactions na one, okay, or April 1. Kailangan ko bang ilagay ulit yung day? Yes, no? So, kung halimbawa, you have transaction 1 na date is April 1 and then transaction 2 is date also 1, Okay, and transaction 3 is 1. So, isusulat mo yung date. Pero yung month and uh, year, yun ang hindi mo na po uulitin. Okay? 
So I hope that that is clear. No? So we will be formally um, also discussing no, how to write in this pagdating natin ng uh, another video lecture for the example. Okay, ngayon I am just discussing you some technicalities that I am expecting no, once you're going to write in this particular general journal. Okay, so the next part would be your description. So by the way, this description column, so ito pong malaking part na to, okay, is actually other uh, other uh, words or title na pwedeng uh, bigay sa kanya is account titles column or explanation columns or particulars column. Okay, so yan po yung mga makikita nyo in other resources or materials. Okay, so para saan ba yan? It is used to record the accounts affected by the transactions. So dito po natin nilalagay yung titles. So di ba pag nag-analyze tayo, okay, sasabihin natin ay nag-increase yung cash, nag-decrease si uh, liabilities. Ganun yung ating mga scenario, di ba, in the analysis. So looking into the chart of accounts na na-mention natin kanina on the formal title to be used, then dito natin sa description column isusulat yung title. Okay? So um, please take note class that once you um, write something here, no, here are some rules. You write first yung uh, merong debit. So pag in-analyze mo siya, itatransform mo na siya using the rules of debits and credit kaninang introduction natin. No? So ang gagawin mo, isipin mo na ano ba yung mga merong debit in the analysis no, of the rules. So um, let's say merong investment by the owner. Okay, sample ko lang ha. Investment by the owner. Okay, investment by owner. Okay, let's say 1,500,000. Okay, halimbawa, yan yung ating transaction. So pag inanalyze natin, ano yung mag increase Asset, di ba? Asset or cash will increase. And then dahil may investment, ano yung mag increase Okay, capital, di ba? The capital will also increase. So since hindi naman natin pwedeng isulat na increase decrease diyan no, ita-transform natin siya sa rules of debits and credit. So kung cash yan nag-increase, 'di ba? Cash is an asset and since asset yan pag nag-increase saan mapupunta? Correct. It will be part of the debit. And then yung capital pag nag-increase saan siya pupunta? Credit. Okay? So i-analyze mo muna before kang mag-formally record. Okay, so using that concept, no, nag-debit tayo ng cash, okay? So you will be writing that debit first. So the rule here is you write first the debits, okay? Lahat ng debits. So since in the transaction cash, then we will write cash, okay? So you will write it on the leftmost portion, okay? Leftmost portion, wala pong magsusulat sa gitna, ha? Leftmost portion po tayo, okay? And then after that no pag na-record mo na lahat ng debits then saka mo lang po muna i-record yung credit. So ngayon naman sa pagre-record po ng credit do not forget uh, as mentioned in your module no um, we have at least half inch, 'di ba, na indention. Okay, ngayon pag hindi naman po kaya ng half inch no then uh, first long it should be indented ha. So ayoko lang po makita na parehas sila ng linyahan nung nasa debit. Okay, so it should be indented at least half inch. Okay, so ganun po. Write first the debits and then after the debits, write the credits. Okay, so sir, saan makukuha ulit yung title na yan? Yung mga titles na yan ay nanggaling sa ating chart of accounts. Okay, so that is clear. Alright, very good. No? So let me continue. So, also, in the description column, no? ang sabi po, it contains short description or explanation of the transactions. So, wag niyo pong kakalimutan that once you record anything in the general journal, no, we need explanation. No? I need a valid explanation. Charat lang. So, ayan, kailangan natin maglagay ng kahit short explanation kung ano ba yung transaction na yun. So, ang gagawin nyo to write the explanation, no, ang suggestion ko sa inyo, pwedeng kopyahin nyo yung transaction na binigay sa inyo. Kung ito man ay nasa classroom type natin, di ba? bibigyan ko kayo ng transaction, so kopyahin nyo. Pero sa totoong buhay, you need to parang at least um, have a brief explanation ng transaction. 
Okay? Yung real transaction natin. So, dito sa case natin, there was an investment by the owner. So, pwede ko pong sabihin that the owner invested cash or investment by the owner. Pwede rin po yun. Uh, ngayon, pag naglagay ka po ng uh, short explanation, it should also be uh, much indented. So, pwedeng at least one inch indented siya compared with the half inch ng credit side. Okay? So, nakita nyo, no? may layering po tayo. Yung, yung debit is leftmost, halos dumikit na doon sa line natin. And then, for the credit side, it should be at least half inch and then mas indented pa yung ating explanation. Okay? So, pwede bang mahabang explanation? Pwede naman, no? Pero, I may suggest that you just shorten it, no? Ito yung naiintindihan at the same time, comprehensive, concise na mag mo agad yung uh, pinaka-essence nung transaction. Okay? So, malinaw po ba? All right. So, do not forget yung pag indent natin class. Ha? And lastly, this uh, description column, again, your account titles should be based on the chart of accounts. Yung spelling, ha? lalo na yung spelling. Kasi pag na nakitaan natin yan na at least isang letter magkaiba doon sa chart of accounts, most likely mamamali ka na agad doon sa iyong journal entry. So again, we need to keep the correct account titles based on our chart of accounts. Okay? So, are we clear on this class? All right. So, mamaya, uh, we will be talking on the uh, other columns pa, no? Pero, um, lubos-lubosin ko na dito sa description. So, after nitong explanation na to, if you have another transactions, what you're going to do is to leave a space. Diba? Yung buti pa yung journal, may date, tapos nangihingi pa siya ng space. Love life ba to? <laughs> Joke lang. So, yun. Kailangan mo ng... Um, to leave one space after that saka ka ulit pwede magsulat ng another transaction okay so wag niyo kakalimutan wag niyo lalagyan ng word ng space ah. <laughs> you need to leave lang a space okay so let's say for example no sample lang ko lang para makita ninyo kung paano yung kasunod so let's say after writing a space mayroong transaction ng second ng April tapos uh, ayan pwede ka nang halimbawa nagperform ka na ng service so debit cash Credit tayo ng service revenue. Pagpasensya nyo yung sulat ko. And then explanation. Uh, services for cash or perform services for cash. Okay? So, ayan. Kailangan natin na magkaroon ng space para makita natin yung mga transactions. Okay? So, ganun din yung mag apply no? Um, mas indented or sorry indented yung ating um, credit side and then mas indented yung short explanation okay so i hope that that is clear ha again if you do have questions please let me know on our respective chat boxes okay so next would be yung pr Ano tong PR na to? Uh, public Relations Officer, sir? Hindi. So that PR is representing yung tinatawag po natin na posting reference. Ah, yun pala yun. So pag sinabi natin posting reference, it will be used for cross-referencing. Yung nirecord natin dito sa journal, doon po sa next step natin, which is yung ledger po natin. Okay? So, mamaya, no, we will be teaching you after kung madiscuss yung ledger, okay, in the next step, no, kung paano po yan uh, ginagawa or paano po yan ginagamit. Pero for the meantime, no, once you record anything here in the journal at hindi mo pa nagagawa yung next step, no, this will be filled in after the transaction was posted in the ledger. So, wag mo po munang lalagyan ito. Eh, sir, ano bang ilalagay dyan? Ang ilalagay kasi dyan is yung account number. Diba kanina in our chart of accounts, meron tayong pairing, yung title and then the account number. So, ang gagawin po natin pag natapos na po natin yung posting na i-discuss ko on the succeeding slides, then saka lang po natin babalikan ito para mailagay natin yung posting reference. Again, this is for cross-referencing what we have recorded here doon sa NASA ledger which we will be discussing later. Okay? So, ngayon mag-deliver as blank muna ako dito. Pero mamaya makikita ninyo kung ano yung account title ng cash doon sa ating chart of accounts, then yun yung ilalagay natin dito sa PR or even yung capital, ganun din. Okay? Sige, so let us just leave that posting reference blank muna for the meantime but it is for our account number. 
Okay. Next would be ito na, yung debits and credits column natin. So, wala ulit nakasulat dito pag meron kayong journal, no? But again, this is uh, this first column will be for the debit and then the other column will be for the credit. Okay. So, para saan yan? Diyan po natin isusulat yung values or amount. Okay? So, sir, paano namin gagamitin yan? If you count that column, okay, mayroon pong dalawang malaking columns sa dulo at dulo. And then you have six columns in between. Para saan yan? Each of these columns will represent a value. Okay? So, let me show you. So, ito pong pinakadulo. Okay, by the way, before we proceed, no? Um, this debit column is where we are going to write no, the debit amounts. So, pag nag-analyze tayo yung ating um, account na tinignan or um, nilagay in the rules of debits and credits, so yung ating amount for that account should be written on this debit if that account is debit. So, dito sa case natin, itong cash no, nasa debit, so yung amount niya should be written here on the debit side. Okay, while yung nasa credit accounts naman natin will be written naman doon sa ating credit side. Okay, so yung credit column is for entering the amount which are related to the credit accounts. Okay? So I hope that that is clear, ha? Ngayon, paano natin gagamitin itong columns na ito? So gaya ng nabanggit ko po kanina, it denotes uh, certain values no, per column. So yung pinakadulo po, let's say gamitin ko itong debit ha, pero parehas lang po ng number of columns yung debits and credits. So itong pinakadulo, no, this will be representing the centavo. Okay? So if uh, your um, amount has a centavo, so ilalagay nyo lang po dito. Okay? So, we will have rules mamaya ha. Actually, wala kayo makikitang decimal point dito kasi once na nilagay mo dito, let's say naglagay ako ng 50 dito sa column na to, then this just simply means 50 centavo. Okay? 50 centavo. Pag naglagay ako ng 0, edi walang centavo. Or if I put dash sign, which is uh, I'm, I'm commonly using, then that means no centavo. Okay? So, that's centavo column. Then, after the centavo column, we have ones. Okay? So, the second column from your right side is the ones. Okay? And then, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and you have the millions. Okay? So, Hanggang millions lang yan. Wala naman siguro gagamit ng trillion-trillion dito or billion-billion. Kasi kung ako yan, I have the computerized system already. Okay? Which adjustable yung columns. Okay? So, ayan. Yan po yung gamit ha. Ngayon, pag nagsulat kayo dyan, please make sure na tama yung paglalagyan ninyo. Kasi once you have uh, input the amounts incorrectly, then your journal entry will be incorrect already. Okay? Sige, so sampleen natin. So kanina in the investment kung naalala po ninyo, the owner invested cash 1,500,000. Okay? So dito sa case na to dahil 1,500,000, ang usually yung ginagawa ko is nagsisimula ko sa sentavo para hindi ako magkamali. Kasi pag inuna ko dito sa millions or or hundreds, no, minsan nabibitin, no, lalo na pag nagkamali ka ng sulat. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, centavo. Dahil wala namang centavo, yung 1,500,000, so I will just write dash sign. Okay? If you don't want dash sign, you can write 00, zero pero matrabaho yung 00, zero na yan pag lahat lalagyan mo. So, um, if there is no centavo, then just put dash sign. Okay? Then once, so wala naman tayong value ng 1, so that's 0, 0, 0, 0. Zero, five hundred thousand na yan, di ba? Five hundred thousand na yan. E ang ano natin, investment natin was uh, one million five hundred thousand. So we will put one in the million. So ayan, that's already one million five hundred thousand. Okay? So again, ingat po kayo ha once you're going to write in this columns. Kasi we don't want na ma-miss uh, align yung ating values. Kasi nga po magkakamali na po tayo dyan. Okay? So pag nagpa-assignment na ako at namali kayo ng lagay, then automatically, no, kahit nilagay ninyo 50,000 ang basa pero nilagay nyo sa maling column, then it will be incorrect already. 
Okay? So after writing the debit amounts on the debit side, then you will be writing now on the credit. Similar din po yung mga mini columns nila. So you have dash sign for the centavo, then ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, five hundred thousand, and one million five hundred thousand. Okay? So ayan. No? Dapat class, you check ha. You need to check every time no that the debit is always equal with our credit because that's our rule kanina diba so once you analyze and once you journalize in our general journal then it should be equal always okay even the accounting equation yung cash diba pag nag debit nag increase okay by 1,500,000 and then yung capital pag nag debit then or sorry, pag nag-credit, it increases, then that is also equal for our accounting equation. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear, no? So, iwasan pong magbura, ha? Iwasan pong magbura dito sa part na to. Okay? So, ayan. So, that's how we input our um, analyze transactions in our journal again you have the dates it is in chronological order so bawal din po magkabaliktad halimbawa you have already the second transaction and then nalimutan mo yung uh, mayroon pa lang before na transaction no so ayan bawal po tayo maglagay ng arrow na ganun no para lang ma na ay nagkabaliktad kami i don't want to see that ha and then in the description column we need the title which can be found where in our chart of accounts and then for the pr later we will be returning to that no for our posting reference and then for the debit and credit it represents certain values based on the columns okay and you should properly write that isa pa pala class before i proceed with those and don'ts dito no so remember ha pag credit or naka-indent yung ating title, dapat nasa credit side yung kanyang title or amount. Ha? Kasi minsan, ang pagkakamali ng student, nakalagay sa credit, then yung amount naman nilalagay sa debit. Or yung ating debit account, nilalagay sa credit yung kanyang amount. So, mali rin yun, ha? Dapat match. So, pag ito ay nasa debit part in the description, so, ibig sabihin, hindi naka-indent, then dapat yung value niya ay nasa debit. Then, pag naka-indent, which means credit side, then that means it should be written for the amount in the credit side. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Ha? Again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay. Sige. So, let's proceed with the don'ts no? uh, na hindi nyo pwedeng gawin in the debit and credit column. So, una, na, na mention, uh, sorry, hindi ko pa pala na-mention. There should be no peso sign. No? I don't want to see any peso sign in the journal. Okay? So, sir, bakit walang peso sign? It's because, again, no, um, more formal na lang po yung, yung ating peso value or peso sign sa ating uh, financial statements. Kasi dito, no, um, actually, ang peso ang peso sign nilalagay dito sa columns ng millions. Unfortunately, pag meron ka na kasing millions value, no, um, you cannot accommodate that peso sign anymore. So, wala pong maglalagay ng peso sign ha pag ako ay nagpa-journalize. Even sa posting, okay, sa trial balance, pwede pa. Next would be no comma sign. So, di ba, in, in amounts, naglalagay ka ng comma sign to separate the values no for the thousands uh, millions diba na value eh dahil dito sa ating mga columns it has already um, the many columns for the values no then i mean the the representation of each column are already given then no need for us to put comma sign so we don't want to see any comma sign and lastly ito yung nabanggit ko kanina so since meron na tayong centavo column then you are not allowed to put decimal points. So, wala po maglalagay ng decimal point in this uh, particular journal. Okay? So, do you have any questions or clarifications? Just please let me know on our respective chat boxes or even you can um, you can um, 
tawag dito? Comment your questions in this video lecture. Okay? So that's the function of a general journal. So um, I will expound further the use of it no, pagdating natin sa example na ibibigay ko sa inyo in another video lecture. Okay? Sige, so after introducing to you the journal, no, nakapag uh, sulat na tayo ng journal entry in the general journal, no. So let me now explain to you naman that there are various types of journal entries. 'Di ba? Pag sinabing journal entry, 'yun yung ating sinulat na transaction sa ating general journal. Okay? So there are two types of journal entries which are one, no, the simple journal entry. So pag sinabi po nating simple journal entry, this means that it contains only one debit and one credit. Okay? Kagaya nung kanina, that is a one debit and one credit. Okay? So um, as you can see here, no, pinalitan ko na lang yung values. So it's 240,000. But again, no, um, since it has one debit and one credit, okay, then we can say that this is an example of a simple journal entry. At a minimum kasi ito yung dapat na meron tayo, no? one debit at saka one credit. Wala pong transaction na isang side lang, debit lang or credit lang yung nilalagyan. It should have at least a minimum of one debit or one credit and we know it as simple journal entry. Okay? On the other hand, no? if your journal entry is comprised of two or more debits and credits, no? So possible 'yun kasi in our analysis, 'di ba? Pwedeng dalawang assets, okay, dalawang liabilities or even the capital was affected, no? So maraming accounts 'yun apektuhan, thus you will have also one uh, sorry, two or more debits and credits. So that is now known as compound journal entries. Okay? Compound journal entry. So let me give you an example. Halimbawa, ito, no? So we purchased um equipment tapos nagpartially paid siya ng um, nagpartially pay siya at saka meron siyang balance on account. So dahil yung equipment mo nag-increase, so it means an asset, nag-debit ka ng asset. Okay? Nagbayad ka ng cash, so nabawasan yung cash mo, then decrease in asset is represented by a credit, kaya may 10,000 tayo na credit. Okay? And then dahil meron tayong increase in accounts payable, dahil may balance tayong utang, then the increase in payable a liability will be denoted by a credit. Okay? So 30,000. This is only an example. No? So as you can see, no, um, there are two credits. And in this case, this is an example of a compound journal entry dahil meron na po tayong two credits. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean na pati yung debit kailangan two or more ah, para maging compound journal entry. So either um, your debits or credits will contain two or more items. Okay? Uh, isa pa pala. By the way, nakita niyo explanation, di ba? So medyo mahaba-haba. Uh, pag nag-explain ka, sabi natin kanina, you should indent that, di ba? Mas indented siya kaysa sa credit. So ngayon, kung mapapansin niyo nag-two lines tayo, huwag niyo pong pag, uh, ano yan, ha, pagkakasyahin sa isang linya lang yung explanation. So ang, ang gagawin niyo is pag nag-two lines na kayo or even three lines, then dapat uh, ano pa rin? tawag dito, align pa rin siya ha, kung, so, kung, kung saan na-indent yung first uh, line ng explanation, ganun din po yung second line natin. Okay? Wala po magsusulat dun sa amount natin na um, columns at saka sa posting reference ng explanation. It should only be in the descriptions column part. Okay? So yan. Pero anyways, going back, uh, again, there are two types of journal entries. You have the simple and you have the compound. Okay? So I hope that that is clear no so that's uh where we use to write our journal entries in our journal. So again ex uh, uh, example of it will be given to you so uh, ating susunod na video lecture. Okay. So just in case no after mo mag-journalize ng isang transaction kailangan mo na rin po agad mag-proceed sa next step in the accounting process. And the next step in accounting process is known as posting. Okay, so let me discuss uh, first posting and then babalikan kasi natin yung journal mamaya for um, the process na sinasabi ko kanina na posting reference. Okay, so let's now 
um, proceed with step number three. So sa sequencing natin ng cycle, this is actually step number three, no? posting our journalized transaction. So pag sinabi po nating posting, this is transferring of the amount from the journal. So di ba meron tayong ni-record sa journal. And then we will be uh, transferring it to the appropriate accounts in the book of final entry or ledger. Okay? So ito, uh, ang ating um, formal record naman dito for posting process is yung ledger. By the way, class, no, hindi po tayo pwedeng mag-skip sa journalizing pupunta agad tayo sa posting. No? Um, we cannot do that since we need also the journal for the formal recording of our transaction. Okay? So, it is known as the book of final entry since, um, ayan nga, dyan na natin i-finalize yung ating um, mga recorded transactions. Pagsasama-samahin natin sila in groups no, based on their appropriate accounts. And then, saka na tayo magpo-proceed ulit sa next step, which is summarizing. So, again, no, um, pag sinabing posting, transferring yun nung amounts mula sa journal papunta po sa ledger. Okay? So, in this process, kung ano man po yung nakadebit sa journal natin, they will be posted. So, pag ginamit yung term na posted, ibig sabihin, it is in the process of posting. Ha? Pag kanina, journalized, okay, that's process of journalizing. Okay. So, uh, mamaya, no, in our example as well, um, pag meron tayong debit in the journal, okay, it should be posted also in the debit sa ledger. And kung ano man yung credit sa journal, dapat it should also be transferred to the credits in our ledger. Okay? So, transfer lang po natin. Eh, ano ba tong ledger na to? So, intindihin muna natin ano yung ledger, then saka tayo mag-proceed sa posting proper. Okay? So, yung ledger po is a grouping of entities account. Okay? So, grouping of entities account that it is used to classify and summarize the transactions. So yung sa journal kasi, sabi natin sa journal, di ba, kanina, it will be recorded based on what? Chronological. Chronological. So nakabase lang tayo sa date. Or kung whatever transaction it is, no? so we just uh, record them in chronological order. Okay? So kung ano-anong accounts yung nakarecord pero nakabase naman tayo sa dates. Ngayon, pag nasa process tayo ng posting and we are using the ledger, no, ginagawa natin ay kinaklasify natin. So lahat ng pare-parehas na mga account titles na ginamit natin in the journal, we will now have to classify them and summarize them in that ledger which will be used in the basic preparation natin for financial statements. Okay? Kaya ngayon, susunod na step natin is preparation of trial balance na. Eh. That's uh, already start starting process na yun ng um, paggawa natin ng financial statements. So, kailangan natin pagsamasamahin para kailangan natin malaman yung pinaka-total nung lahat nung naka-apekto doon sa ating entities accounts. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Ha? So, again, ledger is a grouping of the entities account. And then you classify, uh, it is used for classifying that uh, journalized transactions okay, to prepare the data for preparation ng ating financial report. By the way, class, um, di ba kanina meron tayong chart of accounts? So alam nyo ba, no? FYI. So dun sa chart of accounts natin kanina, madaming nakalista. So kada account doon, merong isang ledger. Okay, halimbawa, you have the cash. Okay, so may ledger siya, you have the accounts receivable, may ledger din yun until dun sa dulo sa expense. No? Lahat po yun ay may ledger account. Sir, bakit? Kasi nga po, we need to get the balance per account. And para magawa yun, kailangan natin ng per ledger no, to classify or to summarize yung na-journalize natin na transactions. Okay? So mami, I will be showing you that. Okay. So, ito, ito yung binabanggit ko. Each account in the chart of accounts has its own record in the ledger. Okay? 
So mayroon po tayong dalawang uri ng ledger. We have general ledger, which we will be using right now. And then the other one is a subsidiary ledger. Okay, so yung subsidiary ledger, uh, we will just be using that na lang po pagdating natin ng merchandising once we use the uh, special journals. Okay? So ang pinagkaiba niyan, yung subsidiary ledger that is only for um, specific accounts. While general ledger, lahat po ng accounts natin in the chart of accounts will have its own general ledger. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. No? Again, we use the ledger for our posting process. So let me show you an example of a ledger. Okay. So yung di ba general journal yan? Hindi. No? Kung mapapansin mo, iba siya sa general journal because uh, in this part, we have the debit side. So parang t-account kanina. And then the other side, we have the credit side. Okay? So each of the accounts will, con will have a general ledger. So halimbawa, this is for cash. Sir, saan namin ilalagay yung title? Actually, pwede dito sa uh, title na general ledger, dyan mo ilagay yung account title. And then, yung account number natin. Okay, kanina account number natin is 101 for cash. So, 101 for example. Okay, so ganyan, no? So, here are the columns. Ngayon, para saan yung mga columns? So, yung date ulit, para yan sa lagayan ng date natin. Just like the journal, no? You just simply put the month and year once per column. Okay, hindi nyo po yan uulitin per line. And then itong maliit na box under the date is used for a specific day. Okay, so let's say April 1, April 1. By the way, uh, namimik lang itong number na to doon sa example pag bumili kayo ng general ledger. No? Pero I'm not asking you to buy general ledger. No? You can uh, create one naman na kagaya nito. Okay, sige. So, Um, yan po yung para sa date. No? So, lalagyan lang natin yan if we have a date na uh, ipopost dito sa general ledger. And then the items column, items po ang tawag dito sa mas malaki or explanation columns. No? So, this is used for writing something lang po. So, hindi siya kagaya ng journal natin na we will be putting the account titles or explanation here. Wala po kayong ilalagay dyan. Except if, um, eto, ibibigay ko to sa example ninyo sa susunod na video lecture. No? What if you have beginning balance? So, pwede ka pong maglagay ng word na beginning balance. I will explain again on the next video lecture kung kailan kayo maglalagay ng beginning balance. But, uh, introductory lang, no? maglalagay ka dyan if you have a beginning balance which means coming from last month or last period na balance. Okay? Kung wala namang beginning balance, then wala kang ilalagay na word na beginning balance dyan. Also, Diyan din po tayo maglalagay ng pencil footing. So mamaya in our next uh, slides, no, meron tayong sasabihin dyan na pag natapos mo na lahat yung posting, then uh, ipipencil foot mo. So you will be using pencil no, to summarize the total of this ledger. Okay? So yan, yan lang halos yung laman ng items. Walang maglalagay dyan plus ha, ng explanation. So hindi siya journal na kailangan mong lagyan ng explanation. Okay? Then yung PR natin, ayan. Sir, di ba may PR na rin dun sa, ano, sa journal? Posting reference yan, di ba? Yes, meron din dito. Itong posting reference naman nito is yung ating page number of the journal. So kanina, nabanggit ko that your journal should contain page number because it is important in the posting process. Dito nyo po nilalagay yung ating uh, page number. Okay? Sir, para saan? Cross-referencing. Diba? Pag nilagyan ko dito ng page number, halimbawa, uh, GJ1. Anong bisa mo GJ1? General Journal Page Number 1. Okay? So pag hinanap ko saan nang galing yung amount na nakapost dito, titignan ko lang yung value na yon sa General Journal Page Number 1 natin. Okay? So ayan. So page number ito. Yung nasa journal kanina, ang sabi ko account number, di ba? So, bakit? Kasi dito sa ledger naman, account number. So, pag hinanap ko yung nasa journal kung saan siya nakapost, titignan ko lang siya sa account number. So, that's, that's the purpose of cross-referencing kanina. Okay? Cross-referencing. So, that we can recheck kung nasaan yung value naka-record sa journal and then dito no, para makita natin kung uh, saan siya nakapost. Okay? 
And then of course, yun sa ating debit and credit. So similar approach then no in the journal. Okay, we have the certain values per column. Okay, so the ones tens, hundred thousands, ten thousands no until millions at also centavo column. So class, please make sure na wala rin po tayong peso sign na ilalagay, wala rin pong comma sign, or wala rin tayong decimal point kasi we have naman po yung ating um, kumbaga, columns no? which denotes those values. Okay? So gaya din na nabanggit ko kanina, kung nasa journal ay debit, dapat nasa debit side siya ng general ledger. Kung nasa credit side siya ng journal, then dapat sa credit side mo rin po siya ilagay. So, hindi pwedeng debit doon sa journal, tapos ilalagay mo sa credit side. Maling-mali ka na doon. Okay? So, dapat pareha sa kung nakadebit sa journal, then just put it in the debit in the ledger. Okay? Sige. So, pakitaan ko kayo ng sample posting gamit itong general ledger. Okay? So, let's say ito yung transaction kanina no in the journal. So, we have an investment coming from the owner. So, yung naging entry niya is debit cash and credit capital. Okay. So, by the way, class, ang process ng posting is immediately after you journalize. Okay? Yun yung talagang process. So, nag-analyze ka, nag ka ng transaction, di ba? Na-analyze mo, nag-increase yung cash, nag-increase yung capital. Tapos, ang ginawa mo, Ginornalize mo. So, record mo na siya. Nag-debit ka ng cash, debit ka ng capital. Okay? Ang kulang na lang posting reference. Okay? So, after mo mag-journalize ng one transaction, immediately you post. No? Um, wag ninyong gagawin na taposin nyo muna lahat ng journalizing saka kayo magpo-post. Hindi po ganun yung tata talagang process. It should be journalize first or analyze first, then journalized, then you post immediately. Then, after mo mag-post, saka ka ulit mag-analyze ng panibagong transactions para ma-record sa journal. Okay. So, let's focus first here in this journalized transaction. Okay. So, ano na yung gagawin natin? So, you will post. Okay. So, yung una, no, hahanapin mo yung account number na itong cash. Okay. Hahanapin mo kasi sabi natin, di ba, um, each of the titles in the chart of accounts contains a ledger. So ngayon, let's say nahanap mo na si Cash na ano na ledger. So halimbawa, ito yung ledger. So ang gagawin mo no, you're going to post that in the debit. Di ba yung Cash po natin ay debited, di ba? At 240,000. So you need to post that in Cash, no? Um, in the debit side, of course. Again, gaya na sabi ko kanina, wala po magpo-post on the other side, no? Kasi mamamali ka. Now, um, you put the date, April 2021, then 1. Sa items, wala po kayong ilalagay na explanation. And then, sa PR, you have the page number. Gaya ng sabi ko, no? Importante yung page number. Kaya GJ, kasi nga po, General Journal, page number 1. Okay? So, ayun. And then, saka mo po i-post or ilagay yung 240,000. So, pag nagawa mo yan, then okay ka na. Tapos ka na sa posting ng cash. Okay. So, tapos na ba ako doon? Hindi pa. Kasi, di ba, kung naaalala ninyo yung journal na sinabi ko kanina or diniscuss ko, after nyong mag-post, babalikan mo yung ledger. Uh, sorry. Babalikan mo yung journal. So, Kukunin mo yung account number. Okay. Kukunin mo yung account number. Wait lang. Okay. So, kukunin mo yung account number na nasa ledger. And then, ang gagawin mo, okay, for cross-referencing, isusulat mo yon doon sa ledger natin. Okay. So, okay. Susulat mo siya doon sa PR natin. And that would be 101. Okay, ayan. No? So, pag nalagay mo na yung PR sa journal, ibig sabihin, that's the time na tapos ka na doon sa debit na yon. Kaya kanina hindi ko pinalagyan yan, di ba? Kasi nga, dapat it denotes na na-post na siya or natapos mo na yung process ng posting bago mo ilagay yan. Okay? Then, we're done with the cash. Ngayon naman, hanapin mo yung ledger ng capital. Okay? So, we look for the capital. 
Okay? And then ang gagawin mo, dahil nakakredit siya dito sa journal, then you should post that on the credit side of your ledger. Okay? So, yung date mo, okay? And then yung page number, so GJ1 ulit, tapos nasa credit side yung values natin for 240,000. Okay? And then next would be, gagawin mo, kukunin mo yung account number, then isusulat mo siya doon sa posting reference natin. And that would be 301 naman. So after mong maisulat yon, then that's the time we're in. Tapos na tapos ka na talaga sa journal. Okay? So I hope that that is clear, no? So saka ka pa lang, pag nalagay mo na tong PR, saka mo lang ulit mag analyze ng panibagong transactions and then mag-journalize. Di ba? So after mong after nito, di ba, kailangan mo mag-leave ng space, yun yung sabi ko kanina, space, and then saka ka po mag-journalize ng panibagong transaction. Okay? Sige. So, ganun yung process. Parang sa isip nyo, journal, uh, analyze, journalize, post, balik sa journal para ilagay yung posting reference, then post, Okay? Balik ulit sa journal and then sa ka ulit mag-analyze ng panibagong transaction. After that, journalize, post, balik sa journal, post ulit yung other side, then analyze. Okay? So parang ano na yun, parang kanta na ng buhay mo, no? Analyzing, journalizing, posting. <laughs> Joke lang, hindi ako marunong kanta. But anyways, no? That's how it works, no? Um... For all of the transactions that you have, no, uh, based on the chronological order or the date, no, so you need to analyze them, then journalize them in the journal, then post them, balik ka sa journal para mailagay mo yung posting reference, at pag nailagay mo na yung posting reference, then sa ka ulit mag-analyze ng panibagong transaction para mag-posts. Okay? So, clear ba tayo doon? Again, if you do have questions, please let me know po on our respective chat boxes. And again, no, um, I will be giving you more examples of specific transactions and how we journalize them in our next video lecture. Okay? So, again, ha, uh, gawin ninyo yung uh, mantra natin na analyze, journalize, post. Huwag pong analyze, journalize, analyze, journalize, analyze, journalize. Ang typical kasing ginagawa ng students, no? analyze, journalize, tapos saka lang sila magpo-post. Ang crucial doon is saka, pag saka ka lang nag-posting, may malilimutan ka dyan. Probable no, na may malimutan ka na hindi mo mapo-post. Which will affect the integrity of your um, financial report. Okay? Kasi hindi siya complete. Pero kung ikaw ay may accounting system, sa accounting system kasi after mong mag-journalize, automatically the system will post that amount to the ledger. Okay? So that's the process of posting. So pag na-post mo na pong lahat, no? so let's say for example, na-analyze mo na, na-journalize mo na lahat yung transaction, then nakapag-post ka na, after that, no, meron pa tayong step na gagawin sa ledger naman. Okay? So after you have posted no, all of the transactions that you have journalized in the journal, then you need to total each of the columns. Okay? So sa ledger, parang isa summary po natin. Uh, by the way, sir, bakit ganito yung ledger? Uh, ito yung example ng ledger pag walang mga mini columns. No? So ayan, ganun pa rin yung nakikita ninyo pero um, may comma na, allowed na mag-comma sign kasi nga wala siyang separator. Okay? So, ayan. Um, after you have already posted, no? Of course, that will be at the end of the accounting period. After you have posted everything, okay? Then, you're now going to come up supposed to be with the trial balance. So, para magawa mo yun, you need to um, total or get the balance or the talagang pinaka-amount na na natitira doon sa per account. Okay? So, each account balance is determined by footing or adding all the debits and credits. So, kagaya nung nakikita niya dito sa screen, no? for cash, super dami niyang transactions posted for the debits and credits. So, ang gagawin mo lang is you will do the footing. So, i-add mo po okay, lahat ng nasa debit and then lahat ng credits. Now, class, itong maliliit na amounts na nakalagay dito, this is 
um, a pencil footing. Ha? Sir, bakit pencil footing or bakit pencil ang gagamitin? That is because okay, um, later pagdating natin ng modules 4 and 5, mababago pa kasi yan or may effect pa yung modules 4 and 5 discussion. Pero the rest of the amounts being posted and journalized, I don't want to see pencil class. Ha? They should be in ballpen. Ang nakapencil lang po ay yung pencil footing natin no, for the totality. Okay, so ito, pag tinotal mo yung debit, it's 520,400. Yung credit, pag tinotal mo, it's 498,200. Okay, so after mong matotal yung debit and credit, uh, by the way, bigyan ko lang po pala kayo ng precaution. Ha? Um, ang suggestions ko class, um, you... Uh, total it twice para sure kayo na yun yung balance kasi baka mamaya um, sulat kayo ng sulat, no? meron pala kayong nag, uh, na input na mali sa calculator, then it would affect the integrity of the amounts. Okay, so again, make sure that you input them properly sa calculator okay? or whatever um, device that you are using para makuha yung pinaka-balance. Okay? So after nyo pong matotal yung debits and credits, kung may laman yung debit and credit, then you should compare yung balance. Okay? So sa debit mo, may 520,400 and then yung credit mo, may 498,200. Okay, before I proceed on that mapapansin nyo pala, maliit yung numbers. No? So, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi nyo po sasakupin. Ha? Uh, unlike with the other amounts here na buong-buo siyang nakasulat dito sa mga um, rows natin, yung ating pencil footing, kailangan class at least half lang. ha wag nyo pong isusulat ng malaki. No? Kasi that is only a pencil footing. Parang subtotal yung tinutukoy nun. Okay? So, pag pencil footing ninyo, wag nyo po ulit sasakupin yung buong uh, row natin. Okay? So, ano lang, at least half lang. Or uh, two-thirds yung magamit ninyo for that column. Okay? And you will use pencil. Okay? So, going back, um, ang gagawin po ninyo is to total. I mean, so, to, to, to check, no? Alin po yung mas malaki doon sa totals. So, dito po, debit has a larger total, which is 520,000 400 over the 498,200. Okay? So, pag kinumpare natin, okay, pag maminusin natin yan. So, saan natin ilalagay? Okay, if the sum of its credit or if the sum of the debits is greater than the credit, so kagaya nito, mas malaki yung debit kesa sa credit, then the account has a debit balance. So, yung difference nun, isusulat nyo dito sa items column. Diba kanina nabanggit ko that in the items column of the uh, ledger, doon natin sinusulat yung balance or natitirang amount ng ating um, ledger account. So dito, no, the difference, try nyo sa calculator yung 520,400 less 498,200. So ang difference nyan ay 22,200 at dahil mas malaki po yung um, debit side, then ilalagay natin siya dito sa debit side pero under items column. Okay? At naka-pencil foot din po. Okay? So just in case naman, in the other accounts, no, mas malaki yung credit, then dito naman po sa items column ng credit po natin siya ilalagay. Ang suggestion ko na lang po, uh, kahanay siya doon sa total ng debit or kahanay din po siya sa total ng credit kung sakali man na ganun po mangyari. Okay? Kasi in this last bullet, if the sum of the credit is greater than uh, is greater than the debit, then the balance should have a credit balance. Okay? And actually, class, hindi ka bigla-bigla na yung cash nasa debit side yung kanyang balance. Bakit? Kasi remember, kung naalala nyo kanina, ang normal balance ng cash ay ano? Normal balance is an asset. So thus, uh, no, cash, is a nor, uh, cash is an asset and its normal balance is what? debit. So, yung balance niya talaga is usually found in the debit side. Kaya, again, it would be found in the items column. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Ha? So, you need to compare. Again, make sure that you input properly sa calculator para makuha ninyo yung pinakatamang balance talaga. Okay? So, ingat-ingat lang kayo doon. Okay. Sige. So, uh, that's how it works, no? If maraming laman yung ating ledger. 
Okay, again, ginagawa mo lang to pag natapos mo na lahat na ma-journalize at ma-post. Okay? Just in case, no, there are also scenarios, what if your ledger only contains one transaction? Okay, kailangan mo pa ba mag-perform ng putting? Kagaya nito, no? Iisa lang yung transaction niya. Example, your notes payable, which is a normal balance of credit dahil liability siya. Isa lang yung pumasok. Ibig sabihin, nag-increase yung notes payable mo by 210,000. Ang sabi po, no? No need for you to perform footing. So, hayaan mo na lang siyang mag-isa. Oh, charot lang. So, ayan. Pero, hayaan mo na siya. No need for you to pencil foot it, no? Kasi kung isa lang siya, that is already the balance. Okay? Also, just in case that if you have tig isang transactions lang per side. Okay? One transaction in the debit, one transaction posted in the credit. So, anong gagawin natin? So, no need to uh, foot both sides. So, di ba kanina in the previous slide, tinotal pa natin yung debit and credit. Dito, wag mo nang itotal. No? Hayaan mo na lang yung amounts na kagaya nito, 36,000 sa debit and 24,000 sa credit. Ang gagawin mo na lang is to deduct those uh, amounts. Okay? So, kung mapapansin ninyo, nung pinagbawas natin, that's 12,000. So, nilagay natin kung saan mas malaki, eh di nandito siya sa items ng debit side. Okay, because that's an accounts receivable and it is an asset and its normal balance is ano? Debit. Okay? So, ayan. So, 12,000. So, again, ang point lang, wag mo nang itotal ha yung uh, both sides kasi mag-isa lang naman yung laman nung side na yon. Okay? And finally, no, what if the balance is zero? Okay? So, halimbawa, kagaya nito, you have both sides or pwede rin na tinotal mo, equal lang siya dun sa other side. Do I need to write zero? Uh, it's your choice, no? You may opt to write zero or pwedeng wag mo nang lagyan ng zero. Pero ako, ang suggestion ko, lagyan mo ng zero. Bakit? Baka kasi isipin mo, ay, hindi ko pa pala na ma-minus, wala pa ako nilagay, di ba? So, uulitin mo na naman mag-compute. Pero pag nilagyan mo na siya ng zero, ibig sabihin, natapos mo ng daanan to at ang balance niya ay zero kasi equal yung debit at saka yung credit sa pinost natin na values. Okay? So are we clear on that class? Do you have any questions or clarifications? Please let me know. Okay? So that's how we do it no? after we have posted everything in our ledger. Okay? So bago ko po iwanan itong posting, no? so I just want to share you lang yung use of the account, which is actually similar then dun sa posting ng ledger natin kanina. Yun nga lang po, no? again, the left side represents your debit and then the right side represents your credit. No? So ang problema lang sa T-account class, uh, hindi siya masyadong kompleto. No? Wala siyang posting reference kung hindi mo lalagyan ng posting reference. Pero may date naman. No? So it is also uh, a tool that could be used no? if in case that you're asked to post. Okay? So um, as you can see, no? parang ganun din. No? Um, you just simply post it based on the dates and then itotal mo. Then the difference pag minusin mo yung yung debit and credit pag may mga balance then the balance will be put in the larger uh, larger part or kung saan po yung normal balance niya just like this cash na sa debit side okay uh, ganun din dito sa accounts payable no pinencil foot natin and then the balance will be in the credit side at pag mag-isa okay hayaan na lang siyang mag-isa so it's just like a ledger it's just uh, more on an informal ledger sa atin pero you can use this as well if in case that you are asked to post okay so same process lang pag nasa credit side ng journal eh di credit side ng uh, T account pag nasa debit side ng journal then nasa debit side din ng T account okay so i hope na nasusundan natin ha so that's uh, the posting process. Okay? So after po natin mag-post ng mga transactions and after natin matotal, ma-determine yung natitirang balance per account ng ating mga ledgers, then you are now ready to prepare the trial balance. Okay? So this is actually step number four in our sequence of our accounting process. Okay? Ano ulit yung first step? Analyzing. The next step, 
journalizing. Third step, we have posting. So after mong ma-post, ma-journalize lahat and ma-post lahat, tinotal mo na or pinensil foot mo na, then you are now ready to prepare the trial balance. So ano ba tong trial balance na to? So this trial balance is a list of the accounts natin which can be found in your uh, chart of accounts and their respective debit and credit balances na nanggaling po doon sa ating ledger. Okay? So the purpose of this trial balance is to verify the equality between our debits and credits. So, di ba, important kasi that we apply the rule that always the debit should be equal with the credit. So after the posting process and after you have a uh, pencil foot that, you need to check ngayon kung equal pa rin ba yung debits and credits natin. So we prepare your trial balance. And it is usually prepared at the end of each of the accounting period after the journalizing and posting processes have been made. Now, this is also a control device which helps to minimize accounting error. Again, it just helps to minimize. Papa, uh, kauntin lang, pero not necessarily that pag nag-balance yung trial balance, tama na agad tayo. No? Because um, when the totals are equal or yung debit and credit are equal, then masasabi natin that the trial balance is um, balanced. No? But in essence, yung equality po nitong ating trial balance is just an interim proof of accuracy of the records. Pwede natin masabing accurate yung record kasi nag-equal yung debit and credit but it does not signify an absence of errors. So mamaya after kung mag-discuss ng um, preparation and trial balance in a short while, no, um, we will be uh, mentioning bakit ba? Ang sabi dito, no, hindi naman necessarily na nagsisignify na walang error yung ating ginawa kung nag-balance yung trial balance. Okay? Sige. So how do we prepare the trial balance? Okay, which is the checking of the debit and credit. By the way, you can see here an example of a trial balance, no? So here are just some of the procedures suggested for preparing the trial balance. So first is to prepare the header which contains the name of the company. So ito po, no? Um, pag kayo nagsulat, hindi nyo kailangang i-bold yan, no? Um, I use that because I just want to signify that this is the name of the company. And then the word, uh, the word trial balance, importante po yan palagi sa isang header, the name of the report, and then the end of the reporting period. So it would be April 30 for um, this example. Okay, so ayan ha, importante yung header ha, the name of the company, dapat tama yung spelling, even the trial balance, at saka yung date natin. So ingat lang kayo dito ha, kasi yung last day of the month dapat yan. So for April, it will be April 30, sa ibang buwan pwedeng 31, pwede rin sa February 28 or 29, depende kung leap year yan. So ingat po kayo dyan sa date. So after nyo pong ma-prepare yung header, by the way, dapat nasa gitna yan, class, ha? ayoko makakita ng saliwa-saliwa. Pwede dito sa side na to, no? sa left side, pero uh, most commonly, um, your header is in the middle. Okay? So after that, you leave a space. Ayan, mahilig tayo sa space, eh, di ba? Para hindi masakal. Charat. <laughs> okay, so you leave a space, at least one or two spaces after okay, the, the date. And then, saka mo po ilagay yung debit and credit. So, kailangan pa rin to, to signify yung mga values na yun represents the debit and credit. Kasi yun nga yung purpose natin for the trial balance to check whether the debit is equal with the credit. Okay? So, after that, no, you list the account titles in numeric order based on the chart of accounts. So, pwede mo pong kopyahin lahat yung accounts na given sa chart of accounts, no? So again, you start with the firsts and then yung order ng chart of accounts. Kagaya kanina sa pinakita on chart of accounts, the first are the asset which starts with cash and then it ends on expenses. Okay? So pwede nyo pong kopyahin lahat. Pwede rin pong ninyong tignan kung ano po yung mga accounts na may mga amounts lang. So you have the choice. no? Okay? The, so mamaya pag, uh, pag naisulat nyo dito yung title pero wala namang amount na ilalagay, then you can just simply write zero na lang po. 
Okay? So dito, ang pinakita ko na lang po sa inyo ay yung mga account titles na may balance. Okay? Based on the ledger. But again, you can put all of the accounts based on the numerical sequence in our chart of accounts. Okay? Next, no? after you have written that, then next step is to obtain the account balance of the account from uh, each of the ledger balance. So, di ba kanina, tinotal natin yung ating uh, ledgers. So, kunin mo na. So, halimbawa, itong cash, kunin mo yung total niyan mula dun sa ledger ng cash. Okay? Please take note ha. Kailangan kung nasa ang side siya or ano yung normal balance niya, dun natin siya mailalagay. So, yung cash natin kanina nasa debit side. So, your balance here should be written also in the debit. No? For the assets, lahat nasa debit. And then for the liabilities, they should be written in the credit, even the capital. Yung drawing, debit side po yan, di ba? The revenue is credit and then the expenses are debit naman. So again ha, please make sure that you write them in their appropriate column. Kung ayaw ninyong umiyak dahil hindi yan mag-balance kasi namali ka ng lagay. Okay? Then after mong maiplot lahat ng balances coming from the ledger, you need to total the debit and credit column. Okay? So itotal mo na po no, yung debit and credit column. So again, please make sure that you input properly in your calculators yung mga values. Okay? And then after that, you try to compare the totals. At dahil we are talking about trial balance, dapat yung debit column is equal to the credit column. Huwag nyo pong ipo-force balance. Ha? <laughs> Walang magpo-force balance dito kasi makikita rin natin yan. So again, make sure that the debit should be equal to the credit. Okay? So that's how we work. Sir, paano yan kung hindi mag-balance? Ayan, yari tayo. No? So we will be proceeding with the um, next discussion which is locating errors. Okay? Pero pag nag-balance naman, medyo makakahinga ka na ng konti. Pero again, just, mentioned, just as mentioned a while ago, no? it does not necessarily mean or it does not mean na nag-equal na yung trial balance natin. Talagang it signifies absence of errors. Kasi kailangan na yung ginawa mo in the journalizing up to the posting and totaling your trial balance are correct. no? Para ma-achieve talaga natin na tama yung na-prepare natin na trial balance. Okay? So this can be used by uh, other users na no? for, for some information that they do want habang nag-aantay sila about the financial statement. Okay? Sige. So, what if hindi nag-balance yung trial balance? Anong pwede natin gawin? Okay? Kasi yun yung pinaka, ano dyan, eh, crucial eh. Pag hindi nag-balance, yari na tayo, no? Anong mangyari? Okay? Here are some uh, tips, no? How you're going to do, no? Once uh, there is an inequality in the total of debit and credit, so it just simply signal us na meron pong error na nangyari. Okay? And what you're going to do is parang babalikan mo yung mga ginawa mong steps para ma-check. Ito, ayan ang mahirap dyan. No? Pag nagkamali ka or hindi nag-balance yung trial balance mo, babalikan mo halos lahat ng steps na ginawa mo to recheck kung tama ba yung mga nagawa mo. Okay? So you need to check, una, no? yung mga errors na possible nung nag-prepare ka ng trial balance. Okay? So una, tignan mo muna yung trial balance kasi doon nagkaroon ng error. Eh. So baka mamaya, meron kang um, column na incorrectly added. So di ba, na, nabanggit ko kanina that once you input the amount in the uh, trial balance, make sure that you input it properly in the calculator. So ganun yung mangyari. No? Pag ikaw ay nagkamali ng pindot sa calc tapos tinignan mo na, tapos hindi balance no so one of the possibility is na mali ka ng add so ang suggestions ko class before kayo mag uh, sulat ng pinaka final total sa trial balance please make sure that you check it at least twice no at a minimum para sure tayo na yun talaga yung balance okay then kung kung inad mo hindi talaga nagbalance then the next step is to um, check the account balance if recorded properly mula doon sa ating ledger. Okay? So baka kasi possible na um, yung kinopya mo, di ba? Uh, yung mga amounts sa trial balance ay kinopya mo mula doon sa 
ating ledger. So possible na baka na mali ka ng sulat or na mali ka ng side na ilalagay. Halimbawa, sa posting natin or sa ledger natin, debit yung balance. Pero nung nilagay mo sa trial balance, ay baka naipsulat mo pala sa credit. So yan, that's already a trigger na hindi talaga magbabalance doon pag nagkamali ka ng side na pinaglagyan or namali ka ng kopya. Okay? Then, after that, another would be baka, ayun nga, ito, no? the debit balance was recorded uh, on the incorrect side and baka naman yung balance was omitted entirely. So, baka may nalimutan kang kopyahin na balance, nilagay mo zero sa trial balance, yun pala sa ledger, meron naman po palang balance. So, ayan yung mga pwede mong gawin to recheck in the trial balance. Check mo muna yung accuracy ng pagtototal mo or even yung in-input mo na amount or even yung side kung saan mo na ilagay yung values. Okay? Ngayon, pag hindi pa rin nakita yung error, no? hindi pa rin balance, eh, after mong ma-recheck yung trial balance, magpunta ka na ngayon sa ledger. Okay? So, ito parang ginawa mo ulit yung buong accounting process no? para lang ma-check kung saan ka nagkamali. Ganun naman talagang bagay, di ba? Kailangan tinitignan natin yung pagkakamali natin. Charot! Hindi, <laughs> pero yun. That's one, ano, that's one um, problem natin pag hindi talaga nag-balance. Balikan mo lahat ang nakaraan. <laughs> okay? So, after you determine now the account balances in the ledger, tignan mo, baka mamaya, no? Ang nangyari is, baka namali mo naman ng compute. Tama yung kinopya mo sa trial balance na amount na nanggaling sa ledger, pero baka yung nasa ledger, incorrectly computed. So, baka nung nag-add ka sa ledger, mali-mali rin. So, ayun, uh, you need to double-check that properly. Okay? Or, baka mamaya you have entered into an incorrect column. So, baka meron kang um, journalized na debit, tapos pinost mo pala ay credit, then that's possibility. Or baka nung nag-total ka na or nag-pencil footing ka, dapat yung balance is nasa debit pero nailagay mo sa credit. So, that's uh, a trigger already of an error that would be seen in the trial balance. Okay? So, yan po yung sa ledger. No? And then, kung hindi mo pa rin mahanap sa ledger yung error, then balik ka na yun dun sa posting process from the journal. So baka incorrect amount nga yung na-post or um, debit entry was posted as credit nung nanggaling sa journal going to uh, the ledger or even baka the postings was omitted. Okay? So ayan, na-omit na mo yung... Um, posting. So, yan yung, yan yung isa sa mga error that possibly will arise pag hindi nyo sinunod yung sinabi ko kanina. Based on experience, no? So, sabi ko kasi sa inyo kanina, analyze, then journalize, tapos post, balik sa journal para lagyan ng posting reference. So, dito kasi, pag inunti-unti mo yan, as mentioned to you a while ago, medyo makikita mo kung talagang na-post mo or hindi. Pero pag ang ginawa mo is you journalize first, no? journalize mo muna lahat, then saka ka nag-posting after lahat, that's the possibility na baka meron kang ma-miss out na line na hindi mo ma-post. Lalo na pag nilagyan mong agad yung posting reference. Kaya kayo klasa, wag mo na kayo maglalagay ng posting reference hanggat hindi po na-post. Kasi that will also be a cause why students are failing to have a correct trial balance dahil na-post niya na or nilagyan niya ng posting reference pero hindi pala niya na-post pa. Ayun, minsan nalilimutan. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. Ha? So it's better that you uh, do it carefully no? once you journalize, analyze, journalize and post and prepare the trial balance rather than making it as fast as you can but you will just produce an incorrect financial report or trial balance. Okay? So hinay-hinay lang no? para mas accurate kesa magmadali tayo. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. And then, let me share you lang no, some possible errors in writing na pwede nyo makumit. Ma okay? So, we have slide errors. So, pag, pwede, uh, pag sinabi po natin slide errors, so this is the possibility that you are adding or omitting digits in an amount. Okay? So, halimbawa, no, um, you have 45,000 na dapat isulat 
pero nag-add ka ng another zero, so namali ka, 450 sinulat mo, or baka 4,500. So ang tawag po natin doon ay slide error because you either add o kaya nag-omit ka ng digits sa isang amount. Okay? So ayan, possible yan. Sinulat mo doon sa other side, 45,000, pero sinulat mo doon sa other side, 450,000. So ayan, hindi na talaga balance eh. Di ba? Then another would be transposition error. Hindi po transportation error, ha? transposition error. So this is interchanging a digit in an amount. So paano po ba nai-interchange? So let's say you have 45,000, no? sinulat mo 54,000. So again, kailangan ng matalas na mata at kailangan palagi pinagbabasihan nyo yung actual na transaction. Okay? Para makita ninyo na maisulat nyo ng tama yung amount. Okay? Even baka 40,500, no? So ayan, pag nagkamali ulit kayo, no, malaki na pong difference 'yan which will cause already an imbalance in your trial balance or even in your future reports na gagawin. Okay? So paki-avoid po 'yan ha by checking properly the amounts based on the transactions analyzed and once you record it in the journal as a pinost na po siya sa ledger. Okay? Ayan. So lastly, no, um, this is the last part of this discussion. So just in case lang, no, na nagkaroon ng um, balance na trial balance, no, it may still contain an error. Ay, possible para yun, sir? Oo, no? Because um, these are some of the errors that um, are not detected by trial balance actually. No? Una, no, if you fail to record or post a transaction, ang tinitignan lang kasi ng trial balance natin is the equality between the debit and credit of what were recorded. No? So kung hindi na record or kung hindi na post yung transactions, hindi sumama dito so walang imbalance na magaganap sa debit and credit. So which means, oo, nagbalance yung debit and credit natin but it does not contain the complete set of transactions. So dapat, again, Tignan ninyo yung listahan ninyong transactions or yung source documents ninyo, dapat ma-record yung lahat yun. Okay? Another is recording the same transaction more than, more than once. So kung kanina nag-fail to record, ito naman pwedeng paulit-ulit. No? Paulit-ulit mong na-record, so nadagdagan lang yung debit and credit mo pero equal amount pa rin nilagay mo. E di nagbalance ka pa rin sa trial balance. But again, sumobra na yung amount dahil nag-double journalizing ka at saka nag-double posting ka rin. Okay? Or record an entry with the same erroneous debit or credit amounts. So kagaya nung kanina, transposition or slide error, pag syempre nasa debit mo 54,000 tapos 54,000 din nilagay mo sa credit pero mali pala, dapat 45,000 pala. So babalanse ka pa rin. Pero kung titignan mo in totality, mali ka pala dahil mali yung in-input mo na values of the debit and credit. Okay? And then posting A uh, part of transaction correctly, okay, uh, as debit and credit, but to an incorrect account. So, pwede ayun. Nag-post ka, dapat cash, pero na-post mo accounts receivable. Okay, parehas pa man din na debit or even um, other accounts. No? So, this will cause your trial balance to be incorrect even if they are um, having a trial balance na balance. Okay? So, again, to avoid this, Please make sure that you counter check. Okay, actually, isa isa niya hinay hinay as mentioned to you a while ago. Tignan niyo yung list ng transactions or yung mga source documents natin. Isa isa hinin niyo so pag natapos niyo, lagyan niyo ng mark na tapos ko na to, na journalize ko na siya, na post ko siya ng maayos. Okay, and then I have computed it properly. Para at least na we can avoid those circumstances that you have prepared a report na balance, yun pala mali naman yung pinaka-total. Okay? So, I don't want to uh, you to experience that, no? Because of the negligence in the right process. But again, no? Please make sure that you do it slowly and clearly mark it properly and then double check it properly before you finalize the report. Okay? Kasi again, we don't want a report that is incorrect since these reports are the basis of our user's decision making. Okay? And we need to present a faithfully represented financial 
report. Okay? This is actually a starting pa lang ng ating um, kumbaga pag-prepare ng financial uh, reports natin which are the basis for the decision making. Pero pag nagkamali ka na dito, of course, it will be carried until you prepare those reports and again, an incorrect report will give us an incorrect decisions. Okay? So I hope that you have learned something about our today's discussion. Okay? So um, this is just a theoretical concept about our journal analyze journalizing posting and the preparation of trial balance so i will be um, giving you additional video lecture for um, a specific example na po of how we journalize posts and prepare a trial balance okay so i will see you there and again if you do have questions here please let me know okay so again so that's the end of my discussion i will see you in my next video lecture i hope that you are safe and I hope that you have learned something, okay? So I'll see you in our group chat for your questions and also in the comment below, okay? So stay safe and God bless everyone. Have a great day. Sayonara, kamsamida. I'll just see you around. Bye-bye. Have a great day. God bless.